In my attempts to kind of roleplay in today's video, I drew on a little fake mustache. Because obviously I, I can't grow one. I'm, I'm just consuming too much soy. Either way, I just want to warn everyone that I'm now going to be inhaling the fumes from the permanent marker that's now in my upper lip. So I might be acting a little strange today. So this time, it's the Italian unification that's happened about 500 years before it did in real life. You guys seem to have liked the German video quite a bit. And uh, I've actually, as of recently, had like this weird EU4 boner. So I'm totally fine with watching this game again. So they're starting off with a pretty good king, a 5-4-4, and uh, their only enemies are England and the Mamluks. I'm also really hoping to see some colonization here today. With the unification of this peninsula, I feel like it should have a pretty big impact. First of all, there's no Naples, Aragon's gonna be a little bit weaker, there's no Pope, and Venice barely exists. So obviously these things are gonna kinda change the entire continent. Immediately starting off here, Italy is the second strongest nation in the world. Alright, I was not expecting that, but I also wasn't expecting the Mamluks to be in third. I noticed the Italians have rivaled the Ottomans, which actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, if these guys have a pretty good game here, our little pizza empire is not going to have a good time. I mean, ideally, I would love to see the AI kind of reform the Roman Empire somewhat. I know they're off to a good start, but that is going to be definitely an uphill battle. We're nearing the 1500s and already some interesting things have happened. Uh, Muscovy looks like they're going to have a pretty good Russian game as well as uh, Portugal is about to die. Oh man, it's it's way worse than that. Somehow Aragon is already a junior partner to Castile. All right, well Spain is going to have a very good game and they've already taken some French lands. All right, yeah, this is a little terrifying. Again, you know, without Naples here, Aragon would have been stronger. And I don't think this would have happened. Either way, at least Italy is their friend. That's probably a good sign. They're, they're going to have a pretty great campaign. We don't do too many EU4 Observer videos, uh, so I don't really know what's rare or not. This seems pretty rare. Okay, yeah, this is bad. Austria also has been uh, looking pretty powerful as they move towards the south. I'm kind of worried about Italy, though. Where are they supposed to expand to now? I did also fix the flags, by the way. I know that was a big problem in the last video. It's kind of funny that I barely even noticed that was such a huge ass bug. Timmy's already dead, and just the entire Persian region as a whole looks like a complete mess. I miss the days where there was just like a big old power out here. Portugal's gone, and uh, it's clear now that Iberia's kind of set their sights on France, who actually hasn't even kicked England out of continental Europe. Oh my god, this this is just not looking good. Uh, the Ottomans are off to a good start, and the Commonwealth have formed. You know what that means. Holy shit. They're now surrounded by the west with Castile, the HRE in the north, and obviously Otto in the east. They better just move south and just pray they get some colonies. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like East Asia is kind of boring now in EU4. Ever since they did this like Empire of China thing, I don't know, it's just not that interesting to watch. This is probably what I'm most worried about. Castile, or future Spain, is is probably going to just dominate the colonial game. Especially without Portugal here. Welcome to the 1600s, and once again, a lot of powers are growing, but Italy's staying the exact same. I'm starting to think this dumbass mustache was actually a huge mistake. I mean, we're nearing the halfway point in the game, and uh, they've only dropped one spot. Surprisingly, still in third. I don't know how, but uh, yeah, Russia has kind of come out of nowhere. Oh, the Ottomans are number one. Okay, that's what I should be talking about here. Uh, they're clearly going to be a big old threat to the Italian peninsula. Well, wait a second. Uh, there's just a war and there is the peace deal as well. This is a good sign. Again, this is EU4, so uh, territories can change in like 10, 20 years. Let's not get our hopes up. France is just having a terrible game. It's been a while since we've seen the big blue blob do this pathetic. Also, the British are not having a good time either. Once again, it's kind of late, and they still haven't unified this entire region. And I feel like the Holy Roman Empire continues to just grow further and further. Did did the Great Horde just join that shit? What the hell's going on? Russia's looking real sexy over here, but uh, even though you know their font size might be nice and thick, it, it don't matter, because uh, this land might not be that valuable, and I can still see the Ottomans probably kicking their ass. Damn! Alright, lots of religious stuff going on. We've got like a huge ball of Protestantism. Uh, most of France is reformed, and I have no idea what this is. This must be new, definitely. Japan seems to be having some problems over here. Once again, Korea has invaded their mainland. Uh, also, I don't know if like they united and then just kind of broke apart again. 
yeah, that sucks. It's still pretty early in the colonization game, but uh, we do surprisingly have France, Spain, and the British all having a little party down here. Also, thank you Great Britain for forming Argentine. I know one guy that'll be real happy. I'm using a little colonization name mod, which is why we see all these crazy names. Should keep things exciting. So I saw that Holland was doing really good over here. A lot of colonial possessions. So, just, I mean, automatically I assume they're also doing fairly good in Europe. But no, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, I believe they have five provinces. But hey, it's all good. Do whatever you want. If you want to be a colonial empire, you go right on ahead. Portugal must somehow exist somewhere, even though they got kicked out of Iberia about like 150 years ago. They're going to try to make their escape to Florida. Oh yeah, I mean, that actually might be their only option. They're kind of just stuck on this single island out this way. I don't know what the hell happened in India. I want to say that, you know, obviously the entire subcontinent is Hindu, but that doesn't matter. These governments have just embraced Sunni. Which Shia, by the way, is uh, almost completely dead. Although Persia is back, they just ain't doing too good. Spain is over here trying to kill the Aztecs, just like they normally do. But something is happening. I, I don't know if it backfired or if it's mostly this like rebellion that's happening. Wait a second, wait just a second. Italy is in a personal union with Bohemia. Are, are you even going to be able to integrate this country? I, I don't think so, but damn, that's that's going to be helpful. The year is now 1713, and uh, this is, I think, my favorite part of EU4. Lots of colonization, lots of crazy things happening in the old world, as well as Italy, I think, is starting to colonize. It's about time. Italian Canada sounds perfect. Hey, Florida, uh, just uh, I'm gonna need you to hand me over your keys. J just be cool, dude. You're, you're pretty drunk right now. You're not driving tonight. Well, my home state of California is being colonized by Holland. It's kind of amazing that this little country is doing so well. Uh, just a little tip, though, as a Californian myself, please just don't make us use straws. We're not fans of straws. And South America's looking pretty diverse. I've seen this continent so many times just being colonized by maybe one or two countries. I think there's about five since these guys are here now. Oh, I didn't even notice that France barely exists. How are they still colonizing? They're getting lucky. They're probably going to lose all that eventually. But uh, yeah, yeah, the French are dead. Also, ouch. Yeah, ouch. Th this one really hurts. They were doing so well 50 years ago. I, I don't know what happened. I think they just lost some friends, or at least a best friend, Spain, who was clearly protecting them from the big bad Ottomans. And to make matters worse for the Italians, the HRE is still very powerful. It's not like they got any weaker over the last like hundred years. Also, I mean, I mean, we got like members that are stealing French lands. For a second straight time, the British once again can't completely take over this region. Uh, the Irish or this Irish nation Fortunately, yeah, allied to some pretty strong people. And Russia, by the way, is uh, looking like they're about to restore the Soviet Union. Or not restore, it's, I guess it doesn't exist. Bring back the Soviet Union 200 years before it did. C can, can we do a video like that? Can, can we make the Soviet Union pop up in the 1400s? Pretty sure they knew about communism back then, right? Oh, this is where the Italians are putting most of their colonial resources. Which is actually perfect because I don't see any other European around here. Morocco's looking pretty good. Are they friends with the Ottomans by any chance? No? No, they're not. Okay, that could be kind of an issue. Uh, I know the Europeans are probably going to invade here soon. Scandinavia is formed, and I believe it was formed by Sweden. Possibly. It, actually, it had to have been, because uh, Denmark has kind of been banished over here. They're also friends with the Commonwealth, and as you might have seen, uh, their biggest rival, Russia, is not doing as good. They, they lost a lot of land to the Ottomans. It's 1735, and uh, most native population has already been killed off in North America. Real nice, guys. I mean, obviously there's nothing left in the South, but that's not a surprise. Uh, they don't usually last long here. Trade-wise, it seemed like Italy was kind of pulling in some bank, and for the most part they are. Uh, but just compared to the English Channel, yeah, it's, it's not really that much. Japan looks the exact same. What is going on over here? Still haven't kicked the Koreans out, and uh, things have gotten even worse as Ming has taken their northern island. That's pretty bad. I hate how almost none of these colonies ever get their independence anymore. I mean, this time, at least in this game, I don't think we're even going to see one or two find some sort of liberation. The other big news is that Russia's dead. 
Russia has completely collapsed in the last 50 years or so. And I did see that they also went revolutionary at one point. Uh, I can't remember really when or how that ended so badly, but it happened. And with their fall, we now have these trans people that are now becoming very powerful. Yep, they're looking pretty good. Korea is also having maybe their best EU4 game ever. If they can wipe out Japan, that would definitely be the case. Uh, they've also established Korean Manchuria. And there we go. I, I, honestly, I think this entire video was worth it. Just seeing Italian Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. That's all I really wanted. Religiously, things drastically changed in Europe. I mean, Protestantism barely exists, at least right here in the middle. Uh, Catholicism kind of came back out of nowhere. Whoa, okay, forgot that that whole thing was established. Most of North America is now following it. Hindu is also just kind of holding on. It probably won't last another 200 years, but at least it's still here. Here's a culture map mode, by the way, which doesn't really matter unless we look at the New World. Uh, mostly Castilian, English, again, a surprising amount of Dutch, which was pretty unexpected. Now, this was just a really, really unfortunate game for the Italians. I mean, they were surrounded by superpowers from every side, but you know, at the very least, they did get three nice colonies. Before we look at the Great Powers, I think it's clear that this was definitely an Eastern-dominated world. The Ottomans, this Indian nation, and Ming, they were just too powerful. Even Korea, I mean, look how well they did. Basically, it's all Russia's fault too. If they didn't collapse, this probably wouldn't have happened. Okay, you know what? Hey, at least, at least they're still on the list. They don't look very good, but they got seventh place. They fell from, from second, but let, let's just ignore that. As for everyone else, uh, yeah. The Ottomans at number one was really kind of the game changer, I think. I, I expected that pretty early. Anyways, guys, let me know down below if you'd like to see me do this with another country. I don't really know who else we could do it with. It, it probably couldn't be like 500 years early. I mean, I don't even think the Soviet Union is possible. That's the only one I can think of. Uh, might be interesting. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. A big thanks to Furry Cruz, Daddy C Bean, Mr. Fister, Yeet God McNeck Ass, Jen's Love Disc, Tanner of the Nazareth, Thick Dick Girl Breakson, Drew's Crack Baby, King Solomon, Kiwi Supreme, Dr. Freaky, Franco is Thick, Maxi G, Swiss Argo, Sean Spillman, Jake Paul's My Daddy, Bruce Vacation, Elijah Senpai, Raging Fruit, Delta Aurora, Kirby, and Elfie C.